Hello everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show and we are live here today and I'm so excited about that. Hello. How are you Excel? Hello. I'm very well thank you. Good, Good to be here again. Now let's just tell the viewers what we have in store today. Now as the colder weather approaches some people start to lose motivation to keep in shape but one thing that will be on show all the time are our arms. So Jane Roft is here in the studio. We haven't had her for ages here. So she's come here and she will be live showing us the perfect exercises to try and combat the bingo wings, which I don't have anymore. I think she's been helping me. And she'll also be giving some tips for all you busy stress heads that need uplifting on natural heat and energy relaxation, relaxation exercises and mini workouts. Okay, went a bit too soon to Cynthia, but she gave us a wave already. And she'll be speaking about Horst, photographer of style by the Victoria and Albert Museum. And I'll be answering a question from a viewer. And if you're wondering what this is all about, if you were at the Love School on Sunday, we will be picking the winner of the competition for that fabulous holiday to the Algarve. Yes. Okay, so that will be later on, so make sure you stay tuned. But let's have the news first with Excel. Hello, Hello my lovely. Let's stop this spinning now. Okay. <laughs> Um, I mean, I've got lovely news again for us as usual, and I shall begin with the Duke and the Duchess of Cambridge, our very lovely Will and Kate. Um, they're taking legal action against photographers who are currently harassing Prince George because... Yeah, um, it's been all over the news, hasn't it? Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're determined to you know, ensure his safety. It's not, it's not really that far into the past where his mother was, his grandmother, I should say, was unfortunately... Um, affected by so many paps mm. so um, I think he's trying to sort of, you know prevent this and nip this in the bud really um, according to a statement from the palace two freelance photographers in particular have been pursuing the one-year-old and approaching him several times including while at Battersea Park and near his home at Kensington Palace so out of order, isn't really it? a one-year-old like let the child grow up normally yeah, I know he's not you know he's a celebrity obviously but just let him have a normal life. It's too much. What it's really, much. what could be the fascinating thing that a one-year-old could be doing that a photo, you know, <laughs> photographer true. is just following it's him around? It's isn't it? You know, he giggles a bit and he, goes and he you know, picks a flower or he picks a grass or, you know, come on. What is that interesting no, about a one-year-old? No, it's harassment, isn't it? Total harassment. Yeah. And so, you know, so a spokesperson said they've taken legal steps to ensure that they stop this person, indiv this individual ceases to harass and follow both Prince George and his nanny as they go about their ordinary mm. lives. So um, good for him. And they're trying to obviously bring him up as normal as possible. Absolutely. Doing normal things, going to parks and everything. And that's really, really hard to do when you're being followed all the time. You know, I didn't know. I didn't see no cameras following me around when I was one year old. Did you, Chrissy? I don't remember, darling. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> that wasn't my, I didn't have my first memories at one year old, but never mind. So, you know, but, but like you say, they want to, you know, raise a child to be normal. And, they've, and it says here, you know, they've always been firm, as in Kate and William, have always been firm with the need for privacy when it comes to raising their son. And, you know, they want to sort of, you know, like you say, raise him in a, yeah. in a normal family life. Too, too right, too right. Um, I thought this was worth a mention. Um, we have, well, I found two sort of popular campaigns that are starting in October. We have the Go Sober for October, mm -hmm. which talks about people giving up drink for 31 days. No, there is, go, there is Go Sober for October, which is drink, and then right. there's Stoptober, which is for cigarettes. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so there's two main sort of thing. And so um, it's, it's about skipping it, either skipping it entirely or at least reducing. But I think the aim really is to give it up for um, the, the whole of the month. And I think with giving something up, if you give, if you're able to give something up for three weeks, you start, you actually break your, you are more successful mm. in breaking the habit. I think it's a great idea because I think when, once someone's trying to give up on their own, it's so hard when all mm. their friends are drinking around them and smoking around them. But if you know that so many people are Everybody, in it together and exactly. you can encourage each other, you can be on social media and talk about it. So I think it's such a, a brilliant idea to do that. Everyone's yeah. together doing There's it. There's definitely yeah. strength in numbers. And so yeah. as people do that, you know that you're not alone and especially like you said if I know I'm going to be going somewhere with a group of friends who are not doing it and I would really stick out like a sore thumb but if we all go okay let's just have I don't know orange juice the whole night why not yeah. and you get really? to make new friends if, you're, if you're, your regular <laughs> friends aren't doing it you can make new friends absolutely absolutely Still keep the old ones but you know just after October <laughs> <laughs> so we have yeah so we have go sober for October which is with drink and the stoptober which is for cigarettes lovely jubbly in, in the same line with that, we're talking about keeping healthy and obviously having forming good habits here for the month of October. I um, actually came across something known as the 
Death Watch. Oh, mm. intriguing. Intriguing, you might add. It is the brainchild of a Swedish inventor known as Frederick Colton, and it uses information on the wearer's lifestyle to calculate their life expectancy. And if you like, it will count you down to your death. Oh, gosh. Wow. How lovely. Imagine. I have a picture here which um, shows in the photo at the top, it talks about, it's, it shows 35 years, five months, 17 weeks, 10 days, and something, something up until the second. And then it actually gives what the actual time is now at the bottom row there, it gives you the time, that's a regular time. But the other, the top and the middle row talk about how many years the person has to live. So years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes. Imagine counting down to the end of somebody's life. And how do they decide what the end? Is it just the average? Like it is decided, good question. It is decided based on the person, the, to set up the watch, you have to enter questions, enter answers to questions about your lifestyle, including medical history, whether you smoke, whether you drink, whether there's a history of medical conditions in the family, whether, there's, um, whether you exercise, what your weight is, and then all of that data generates a score that then tells you how long you've got left and, to live. And do they also think about sort of your danger risks, like if you cross the road? Well, this is the thing. How many times you cross the road? Well, but, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Do you, do you sleep on a bunk bed? You might roll over and, you know, because at you night know, or something. You no, know, none of us know where we're going to go. Obviously, it's more risky if we're not healthy and we're not eating right, but no one knows at the end of the day. Exactly. Do they? I mean, it, um, it, was, it was actually... If there was a fundraiser um, for for to, to produce the watch, which ra which had raised ninety about ninety eight thousand dollars, but now after manufacturing, after actually creating it, it's being sold online through um, and people Firebox. Are buying this thing? Oh yeah, for forty nine ninety nine pounds. The the inventor Colton explains that the real purpose of the device is to encourage people to make every second count. Literally. <laughs> um, remember so let me look at my watch while I'm crossing the road yeah, and get distracted yeah exactly it. let me see oh how long have I <laughs> but, but also but can you imagine the sort of the, the sort of what's the word the, the, you, you're, you're creating imagine someone will say to you look at their watch and think oh I've only got an hour left to live right I'm just going to mess around now or something you know something ridiculous like that it's like I can understand how the can concept you... but I just think it's too far fetched slightly, slightly macabre like, yeah, slightly, a bit too much yeah I just I just don't I couldn't but yeah, it's 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 out there. People are buying these things. Maybe I mean, I think it's really good to be aware of our mortality because then you do make the most of of your life and your opportunities and you know your family yep. and not so you don't let silly things get to you. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, yes, okay, we're not going to be here forever. Let's make the most of it while we're here. But but to actually have a blow watch. by blow account, <laughs> live life for the second. Mm. Mm. Would you get that? No, let's move on. <laughs> Got a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I thought I'd mention here, because I was talking about women who are losing weight and all that. I thought I'd encourage the men as well to get their, you know, to see some role models. Um, a young 26-year-old who, um, who works as a joiner was previously guzzling down 6,000 calories a day. And he was going on alcohol binges and eating nothing but fast food. Excel, I'm sorry, and I don't like this box in front of you. I'm going to move it. Yeah, it, looks okay. like, it looks nice on the wide shot, but not. Can someone take it for me, please? Go ahead. I know it's a live <laughs> show. It doesn't matter. That's fine. We do stuff on the live show. We'll, we'll bring it back later, guys. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, darling. Now we can see your pretty face. Oh properly. yes, thank you. So he was he was going on alcohol binges, eating nothing but fast food, and his weight shot up to 17 stone. And I have a photo of him before here, looking quite rounded. And um, he said he was going to the gym, but it made no difference. And he basically had man boobs and he hated the way Let's he looked. Let's see the photo then. There and you go. yes, this is him. He hated the way he looked. And he said the low point for him was when a lady pointed to him and said he was the fat one. But thereafter, if you cue picture two, he now resembles... That's not him. That is him. That is not he him. looks like Beckham. No way. He, 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 he would drive David Beckham away right now. He no looks a million dollars and 50 cents. How long did that take him? Well, he said he dropped... Ooh, oh, no, he didn't actually give me a time here. But he oh. said what he did, he changed to a high-protein diet of grilled chicken and fish, started taking supplements. Oh, yeah. In a year, his weight dropped from oh, 13 yeah. stone... 
Oh, it's, rather, not, dropped it's not even two. just the weight, it's just the physique. The, you know, exactly. The he, so he went from 17 to 13 stone in a year. So he lost four stone in a year. And his waist shrank from 36 inches to 30 inches. And his body fat went from 30% to 6%. Wow. So he's a father of two. And he treated himself to that photo shoot That's, to celebrate. Gosh. And he's, you know, he's marvelous Good looking now, him. I have to say. Well done, you. I think we've got time for one more. <laughs> a quick one, I think. But what do you think, though? Because I think a lot of the time people kind of talk about well, wanting to look good and all that. And I think, and I think Jane is here. We'll have to ask her later on. But I think it's down to being fit as opposed to not really the kind of um, what's the word, the, the vain side of things. But being healthy, being generally healthy, and being. I think he he even talks about being ha feeling happier in himself because well, I'm sure now he's more confident because we did a show recently about yeah. this and about how men feel when. Um, they get taunted and sometimes you think, oh, men don't get affected by these, these comments like chubby or you've got moobs or whatever. Yeah. But they really do. And yeah. some of them, I was quite surprised that some of the research, was some of them even feel suicidal when, when people taunt them like this. Yeah. So I think, you know, it does, it does make you happier does when, you, when you're looking after yourself. And just by eating better, it changes your mental state it, it as well, even kind it? of Yeah, because it even gets you, because when you're eating like junk food and all that, you actually feel sluggish you and do, you feel quite, you oh. Do. You know, you might be skinny, but you're not fit even. So it's not even about the size necessarily. It's about yeah. being fit and being I, healthy. Know, I honestly can't remember the last time I had fast food. Oh, well, there you go. I Good really for you. can't remember. Because it's, it, it is, it's because it, your body kind of tends to, you know, you, your body feels appreciated when it's living all healthy it and all does. that. It does. Yes, Shall I Shall we know. go now? Because the quicker we go to a break, the quicker Jane Rafter will be on with us to Indeed. show us how to, to turn up our arms or tone mine up even more. <laughs> I'm just being silly. Are you trying to expose all me? Right. No, darling, no. And she's going to be talking about other techniques and short exercises as well that you can do because we were talking about something very interesting before the show, which we'll share with all of you here. So do stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. Now, before we go to our lovely Jane, let's first find out what the public said when we asked them what their favourite and least favourite body parts were. And this first lady, she was saying what her favourite body parts are. I think my breast. You one breast? Both breasts. Because <laughs> they're probably the best asset I have, because my bum's quite flat. So yeah, my breast. Why well, don't you like your shoulders? I just want them to be a bit like, not as broad. A bit more narrow. <laughs> I don't know. Um. My first reaction was my brain, because it shows, um, obviously it houses my intelligence and um, yeah, when it's working, when it's doing its job, it's showing that I'm a very engaged person, generally. Okay, and what about your most least favourite part? Um, the organ which, the appendix, obviously, because it's now obsolete, so when it, when it gets, you know, when it, when it goes, it hurts and it can do some damage to you. Because we evolved and we no longer need it, so that would be the most obsolete part. I would say mitochondria. Well, what's that? That's the powerhouse of the cell that makes us us. So we have trillions of cells in our body, and without the mitochondria, we can't really function. Is that the part of the, the is that part of the your DNA? Uh, it's not really. It's uh, one of the organelles. So one of the if you think about organs in our body, it's a bit like that in a cellular level. So it's. Uh, very important it gives you the energy and also um, the power to to function in our everyday lives all right so that's what makes us us you, you think in terms of cells yeah absolutely and also uh, bacteria as well. well we've got tons of bacteria on our body which makes up about 10 10 times more the bacterial cells in our body than the human cells um, so in a way like the microscopic things that we can't really see are probably the most important part for me I don't know legs I was going to say that. I've been complimented on that a few times. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. So, so, you're, um, so you'd say your legs is your favourite part? Yeah. Why is that? Probably because I use the most. <laughs> and what's, what's your most least favourite part of your body? I don't know. Arms, they're quite small. So is, do, you, do you try and do anything to change how you feel about them? Go to the gym a bit. But that's about it, really. What about before? What was your favourite and least before you were pregnant? Were they different parts? Yeah, no, my favourite probably my boobs. <laughs> and least favourite tops of my arms, bingo wings. I like my smile 
and my eyes, they're very, very. We have a close up of the eyes, man. Very nice, I can see why. Yeah. And what's your most least favorite part of your body? Probably my tummy. <laughs> yeah. What do you want it to be like? Just more toned, I guess. Yeah. I don't. I don't need abs or anything. That's. But yeah, just more toned and flatter, I guess. <laughs> Right, so some interesting answers there. But first, I'd like to say hello to Jane. She's back in the studio. Hello, Hi, Chris. It's I'm so lovely so to be happy. back. I'm so happy you're here. Yeah, it seems like ages. I know it has been ages. Yeah, it is <laughs> but we have been seeing your lovely here. face every every show we've had because you've yeah. been doing those lovely fitness tips. Yeah, which have been great fun to do. They have been mm. and to watch. So now we're going to talk about bingo wings. A couple of people mentioned yeah. their arms there. Yeah, a couple of people did, and lots of my clients talked to me about arms. So. Mm. I thought I'd have a chat about what you can do to improve your arms and mm. um, there's lots of things you can do. I mean the obvious things are to work with weights which yeah. um, can tone up your arms but one thing that really really works especially for women is just to use your natural body weight so you can do it anytime anywhere and I'm going to show you a couple of things you can do in okay. a minute. Okay, yeah. alrighty. Um, but I've, I've had lots of ladies who've come to classes and done work with me who've seen real changes in their arms and you can tell if a woman works out, I think, by her arms. And a lot of women, I think you'll probably agree with this, mm -hmm. we get fixated on our weight on the scales and also we look in the mirror and we just look. If we think we've got a, a fat tummy, we look at the tummy. And if we think we've got a fat bum, we look at the bum. Mm -hmm. And then you can just get a little bit obsessed with that. Whereas actually those areas are easier to hide if you've got a nice dress or nice baggy trousers. But mm -hmm. as you have said earlier, the arms show. Most of the year round, your arms are on show. So if you think of your Christmas outfit, it's probably got yeah. your arms on show. That's so right. really, it's worth focusing on, on, on your arms and your arm strength. And, and of course, it's good for you functionally as well, because it makes you stronger. Now, you've helped quite a few clients with their arms. And I have. And you've some photographs. So shall we have. have a look? Yeah. I mean, I've, got, I've brought a few pictures with me. Uh, the first one is the a lady who's actually just celebrated her 60th. Yeah, that's her. Look at those arms. Yeah, that's, that's Annette. Great. And she was just dancing at her 60th. Mm -hmm. And her arms look amazing, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they do. They really do. And she does a lot of Pilates and yoga. Mm -hmm. So that's the natural body weight. So what I mean by that is you're just leaning on your arms. Right. So you're not using okay. hand weights. You're leaning on your arms. Okay. And the other interesting thing is that it's not always about reducing the size of your arms because you might be skinny and have really weedy arms. And I've got a lady who's always been slim. This is Beverly. Have we got Beverly? That's Beverly before. She's been coming to classes now for three or four years mm -hmm. and she's always been slim and she does the circuit classes and Pilates and yoga so she mixes up the weights and the natural body weight mm -hmm. and she's not, you know, she's not bulked up as such but she's just got some nice muscle tone. Have we got some more pictures of Beverly? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you the can. one where she's like that. Yeah, definitely. She's just got a nice shape to her arms She's much better there. Yeah. yeah, and I think a lot of women are frightened that they will get big and bulky. Uh, it's quite hard for women to create bulk. It's, you know, female bodybuilders have to work incredibly hard mm -hmm. to create size. It's really unlikely that you'll get big arms. And very heavy weights to get. You've got to work big. with really heavy mm -hmm. weights and do low repetitions and really seriously train to create growth. I promise right. you ladies, you're not gonna no, you're true. not gonna get big if you work with weights and if you work on your arms. And the okay. other thing to say, Christy, that's really important is you've got to work out whether it's body fat on your arm or lack of muscle tone or both. Because you can't spot reduce fat. So no amount of this mm -hmm. will shift body fat that's sitting here. So if you if you've got body fat here and you're unlucky and you store it there you need to look at your cardio exercise and your nutrition right. and then hand in hand with that get on to work on the muscles underneath the Can you show us a couple of exercises? Yeah, I brought some, some, time. some hand weights. <laughs> okay. yeah. So um, I thought you might want to cool. have a little demo, Chris. So if you just want, I'm going to pick them up safely with a straight back. They're only two kilograms. I brought a nice little light pair of weights for you, Chris. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure you probably work with heavier weights than those normally, but I had to carry yeah. them from the car. <laughs> so um, obvious muscle, the bicep. Mm -hmm. So that would just be a bicep curl. So it's worth investing in some dumbbells and just having them at Is home. Is it bicep curls in a dress? 
bicep curls in dress and high heels, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so of course we're working here, mm -hmm. we try not to swing back the arms, so you keep your elbows slightly in front, and of course you're engaged in the abs, aren't you Chris? Yes, I am. Because I know you're I do regularly. I that now. Yep, you're working out regularly and it shows. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure you, everyone Thanks would to you, agree. we're going to talk about that one show, what yeah. she's done for me, this lady here. Well, you're looking amazing. So this is easy for you yeah. now, isn't it? Yes, it is. Shoulders, mm. upright row. This is a great exercise. So your elbows come up um, slightly higher or level with your shoulders and, you, and your weight <laughs> come to <laughs> chest height. So this my, is this my muscle My dress here. is a bit like... <laughs> <laughs> is it pulling a bit? Yeah, a little bit. And then one for the triceps, the back of the arm with the mm. weight. So if you take the weights behind you and then lift your arms up and lower and lift. You want nice straight arms. Can you feel that in the backs yep, of can, your arms? Definitely. Yeah. So just those three simple exercises. Mm -hmm. And if you just did, I mean, it depends on the weight. If you've got light weights, do them for a minute each. Yeah, you can definitely feel that. Yeah, a minute each. With and such a light sort of weight yeah, as well. Yeah, you can go for mm -hmm. a minute. And, um, and if you can't do a minute, just build it up. Okay. And do it every day. And then have a little stretch afterwards. But another thing that you can do is use your own body weight. Yeah, you can demonstrate that. Cause yeah, I, can't, cause I can't do that in a dress. <laughs> no, you can't do that, no. So I'll show you what you can okay. do um, for your arms. I mean, I, I do a lot of plank work and a lot of Pilates and yoga okay. where you're just leaning on your arms. So if you're at home in the evening and you're just watching telly, you could just watch telly like that as long <laughs> as it doesn't hurt your neck. An easier way of doing a plank is to pop the knees down. Okay. But the beauty of this, you see, I'm working all my arms and my shoulders, but I'm also working through the core here. Mm -hmm. Now, would you tighten your tummy yeah. when you're doing those? So you you're want working to tighten more than... the tummy. Right. Definitely tighten the tummy. And you've got to try not to sag the lower back. Right. You've got that to damage your back if you Yeah, do that. it would hurt your back. So you want to keep hold of your core here. Another way is to come down on your forearms. And it, I don't know if you saw recently, there's a man who broke the world record for a forearm plank. Do you know how long he stayed like no. this? No, how long? Four and a half hours. You're joking. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you see that? He's in the Four Beijing police. See, yeah. James, the news for us as well now, Excel. <laughs> Four and a half hours. <laughs> so goodness. we can do it for 10 seconds, All can't right. we? <laughs> Another really good one is a tricep press up. So this okay. is a normal press up, right? That's for your chest and your shoulders. So tricep press up is the elbows stay narrow. These are hard, I've been yeah. trying to do these. Yeah, they are quite hard. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you only go to here. Right. What's quite nice is to add a stretch and then maybe okay. combine it with a plank and then come back down and then lift. So this is basically a yoga Just, just a question about that one, because sometimes when I try to do that one with the, the triceps are quite close, yeah. it kind of hurts my wrists a little bit. It feels yeah. like it's too much pressure. Is there a way that you yeah. can... Yeah, some people do find that. A handy hint is that you've got to make sure all of your fingers and your thumb is pressed into the floor. Oh, right, okay. If you lean on the outside of your hands, you're not getting proper stability up through your arm and your okay. wrist. So that can help. The other option... Jane, we've run out of time. I can't believe oh. Tom is 15 seconds. That's unbelievable. I'll have to save that tip I was about to save All for right. next time. Jane, pop, pop yourself here. So just to say that we did have quite a lot more to speak about, didn't we? We did. We didn't talk about the mini workouts and we didn't talk about the energy yeah. and, and stuff like that. So we, you will be back again, Jane. I would love to. Us. I'd love to come back. So we'll have her again in the studio to talk more about these things. I'm so sad we ran out of time. It was so exciting. Oh, Thank you so it's much, It's lovely Charlene. to be here. Thanks for uh, having me, Chris. We'll do stay Stay tuned because after the break we're going to be joined by the lovely Cynthia Gregoire with her styling tips. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. So now I have Cynthia with me. Hello, Cynthia. Hello. How are you, my love? Very well, thanks. So just <laughs> before we go to your styling tips, I know you've got some slides and stuff to show us. Let's take a look at this challenge that I did. So as many of you know, one of my favorite things to do is eating. And my favorite TV show, one of my favorite TV shows, is Come Dine With Me. So this challenge is going to be a very different one. This one is a Come Dine With You challenge. And I'll be up against a friend who I'm going to introduce you to in just a moment. What's going to happen? We are going to be shown how to make a really nice starter and main course. 
and then we'll be up against each other to see who is going to cook the best one and obviously we'll have a fabulous chef that will be grading us and deciding who the winner is. So I'm really looking forward to this one. That's Paolo over there ready to, to compete with me and let's get going. Okay, well today, um, Chris, you're going to be doing the cookery challenge, which is a two course. So you've got a mm -hmm. starter and our main course. Starters, you've got um, chicken Caesar sub, we've got a twist in there, you know, with a bit of a Caribbean influence. This, so uh -huh. nice and spicy. That's the jerk chicken. Yep, one. jerk chicken Caesar mm -hmm. sub. Then for mains, you've got lamb fillet, crushed new potatoes, tomato vinaigrette, pea puree, and that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to win this challenge, but I will try my best. Let's see how Paolo does as well. So you're going to start off by showing us how to do the yeah, starter. Yeah, a quick demonstration, then I'm, you, yeah, the rest of you are going to follow and copy what I've done. All right then. Okay, let's get going. I'm going to take it off now, and then just the rest. We could do that, can't we? Mm. Okay. We're ready to have it, give it a go now. Stop copying me. You're <laughs> cheating. So we've completed our starter, so Ian is going to be judging us and telling us who won the first round. Okay. Go ahead, Ian. Well, ladies, looking at both your dishes, the both look fantastic, but it's about the taste and flavour now, so I'm going to taste it, <laughs> then see what I think. All right. This so is where I get wicked. Right. It's a difficult one. Uh -huh. For me, the both taste beautiful, and I can't decide, so to me it's a tie, I'm sorry. Really? Yeah, two beautiful dishes. Oh, OK. <laughs> Yay, we've got a tie. <laughs> Don't get too excited, you're not finished yet. Oh, I'm going to taste one. Can I, take, can I taste mine now? Jump in there, taste for yourself. Mm. Really nice. Okay, so chefs, now we've done the first course, now we're going to do the second course, which is a bit more technical. Oh dear. So we'll be paying attention now because there's a bit more going on. You want that to seal. Let's taste it then. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Delicious. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. I think, personally, very good effort. What we did today, even though it sounded simple on paper, it's quite technical. You've got different elements, different things going on at once. Mm -hmm. it did very well. Well, let's taste it and see what we think. This just looks very dainty and small, okay? <laughs> Tasting menu. How did you find making this? You found it easy or was it, was it hard work? That was good. It was okay, wasn't it? The flavour of the mint pearl is just fantastic as you taste it, an explosion in your mouth. Lamb's nicely seasoned and the mash, or a new potato crushed. Tastes beautiful. Yet again, the flavours, they're just your presentation. But right. let's just show your chef. I'm going to put this to the side. <laughs> Greg Wallace well moment. The offensive, the offensive tomato, get it out, yeah. What about you, chef? How did you find this? No, it was good. I was following my paper quite a bit, but. It's nice. I think presentation wise, this looks better. But I think yours has got more, so the other one's got more flavour. Yours just needs a bit more flavour to it. Mm -hmm. But it's two beautiful efforts, well done. For this one, I say, Chef, you got it, man. Yay! Well done. <laughs> thank you. Well done, Pastor Ian, thank you so much. No, that was really my good fun. Thank you. Guests watching something about food when I'm hungry again. Brilliant. <laughs> so let's move swiftly on. So we've got Cynthia, she's going to be talking about horse. 
photographer of style by yeah. the Victorian Albert Museum. Yeah, a very important person in the fashion industry, right? A yeah. fashion photographer. So I'd like to just take you through uh, this exhibition that I've been at at okay. the Victoria and Albert Museum mm -hmm. and highlighting a 65-year career of Horst P. Horst is his name. So this is an exhibition that just started in September and it actually runs till early January. And uh, basically Horst was the master of light, composition and atmospheric illusion. And he worked with many of the greats like Salvador Dali, Marlene Dietrich, Coco Chanel. And uh, he's German American. And we're just going to go through a few slides from the exhibition. So the first one here just is sort of shows the um, exhibition, how it's set up. It's, it's running till early January 2015. And the second photo here shows Horst with a uh, Swedish fas fashion model, Lisa Fonsegreves. Now she was dubbed the first supermodel ever, and this was taken oh, in really? New York City, oh, 1949. Yeah. So you can see there's Horst right there, and he's working before the digital age. Like you yeah. need to appreciate his work that, you know, he's not taking these on an iPhone sort of thing, right? This is before mm -hmm. even color came about. You needed a lot of skill then, didn't you? To, Definitely, to take, to, to take and he photos, just had an yeah. eye for mm -hmm. how to set up a photo in the yeah. composition. No automatic mode. Like yeah. they have nowadays. Exactly, no <laughs> retouching. Um, all right, so the next uh, slide here, we have um, just the first room there that you go to. It's very like black and white, um, unpublished photographs. You can see the dresses in the back. You've got some dresses by Elsa Schiaparelli. You have some dresses by Coco Chanel. If we keep on going through the slides, Let's see the next one. Guys. Yeah, we have uh, Marlene Dietrich here. Now, she was a German actress and singer, and she actually complained to Horst with this photo. She said, you know, I don't like the lighting. And oh. after she saw it, she actually used it to promote herself. Oh. So very picky at first, but then it's a lovely photo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving along, uh, this one here is probably a very iconic image for Horst. It's a lady in a corset. Now, this was taken the eve of World War Two. And uh, basically, this is his most iconic you know, photograph, mm -hmm. right? So if we go to the next slide, here's where the exhibition got fun for me. This is when fashion and color. So many um, advancements in technology came through. The Vogue covers there. He worked for Condé Nast. And you can just see all the covers if we keep going. Uh, we also have one of these fashion covers here. This was taken the summer of 1941. And you can just see the composition and the color. This one is of Muriel Maxwell, 1939 American Vogue cover. Uh, this one here actually is quite, you see the lighting, Chrissy, mm -hmm. the way he's setting up the photos with the shadows and the illusion. This one here is the headdress and the uh, dinner coat, dinner suit by Elsa Schiaparelli who is, works very closely with Salvador mm -hmm. Dali. So you get that kind of surrealism kind of look there. Right. And um, I think that was all I had for the okay. slides there, but um, it's really uh, worth it going to check out yeah, the exhibition. That's really interesting. Right. Should we talk about our outfits? Should we talk about our outfits? Got all right, let's just stand up okay. for this. I think I'll start with you today, Chrissy. Uh, just for our live show, I've put you in this wonderful uh, number by DVF. And if you can see here, I've just paired it with some um, heels, black heels, and it's got this lovely star print on it. And it's just her iconic wrap dress done in a just a really fun print. And that's mm. just a nice, and really nice and comfortable touch. to wear too. Oh, it's gorgeous. Really I'm nice. really loving this star print. It's just really fun, really yeah. light. Um, myself, I kind of went for this Queen Nefertiti look sort of thing. Uh, this one's done by Nicole Miller, and it's very like art deco. You can mm. kind of see like it's got the beading and uh, just a lot of detailing in it. It's, it's lovely so it's... on you. It's really nice. Thank you. So we've got about a minute left. So I think we've got time to quickly go okay. to the rail. Let's right. have a look what we've got here. Well, let's just hold up a few things here. Basically, I just, you know, if you can't afford a N Nicole Miller dress, I kind of had some alternatives here. Some Danish designers doing some lovely, you know, evening nice looks there. One. You can nice. pair that with sort of like a silk uh, mm -hmm. vest underneath. Um, just looked at some different prints that I'm seeing on the high street. So we are seeing, you know, the leopard trending, but you know, turn the leopard into something a little bit different. We've got the different spots, the different yeah, colors. Really nice. This one here is kind of like that evening look I as well. That. Yeah, um, just two more, I guess. Uh, this one here, kind of like the mixing of the patterns there with that jumper. We've got this, you know, the um, hound tooth, or as you say in England, the dog, dog tooth, tooth with the mm -hmm. leopard sleeves. And then this is also a lovely print by DVF. Again, you can see the mixing of the patterns and also that monochrome kind of look there. Mm -hmm. So 
Okay, and what's the, what, would, what would you pair this with? Would you say? This one here is scarf. just a, it's a scarf, but it's just, you can see that it's dip dyed and it's dual color. So although it is this trending leopard, right, that we see, you know, go for a different color leopard. Mm -hmm. It's also like two-tone color. So you could just throw this it's on anything. That one. So really it's lovely. really soft. And Sifa, really thank you so, so much, my love. Oh, that was welcome. fabulous. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Well, do stay tuned because we do have one more part. I'll be back with Excel talking about the love school and also picking the winner for the fabulous trip to Portugal. So do stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back viewers and it's almost time to do this lovely prize draw for the trip to Portugal. And this was announced, <laughs> this was announced at the Love School, which we have some photos to show you actually. Okay, stop now, <laughs> it's irritating me. All right, so let's, let's just take a few, a look at these few photos that we've got for you from the Love School. So this was like, I was actually the master of ceremonies along with Rob the presenter. And I thought, well, you can't really see who that is, but that's actually Teresa, Megan, yes she goes, who was doing my makeup on the day. And in the previous photo, we also had Marcia who, who did my hair, and that's her, the lovely thing. So she, she did a really great job with the hair and she did it really quick. So let's go to the next one. Oh, that's just us getting ready. <laughs> it was all go, wasn't it, Because yeah, you were there as well. Absolutely. This is Watina, she was just brilliant. She was helping me so much behind stage and mm -hmm. you know, with everything that I needed, she was great. Now that's Robert there on stage with me. It was great fun, we were doing competitions and everything. Place was packed. This was packed. Oh gosh, the, the electricity was just. It was amazing, wasn't it? Was it? Wonderful, and we did yeah. have a talent show as well, a singing competition, and mm -hmm. the crowd went absolutely crazy, didn't they? With the cheering and everything. They were very good judges, I have to Brilliant. say. <laughs> yeah, they were actually. They were really loud. <laughs> Hope they didn't get a sore throat afterwards. <laughs> and here's the VYG with their performances. They were fantastic yeah. as well. Really good fun. They did music or they did a street dance. Look at that. Really good. And then, of course, we had the Love School class with Renato and Cristiani Cardoso and really like food for thought with the things that they spoke about. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely brilliant. Really, really enjoyed it. So, of course, on, that, on the night, I actually announced the, the competition for the trip to Algarve. We're going to do that in just a moment. Look at the crowd. Oh, mm -hmm. wow, it was amazing. Absolutely. But let's answer this question from a viewer, first of all. And let me see if this had a name. I'm not sure, actually, if it had a name. No, we don't have a name, but never mind. This is from Anonymous. And she says, hi, Chrissy. I start to feel a bit low when the autumn and winter months start coming in. I'm not depressed or anything like that, but with the days getting shorter, I'm not really looking forward to what's to come. What would Chrissy do? Now, I have to say that I used to really hate the winter months because I, I would normally feel really down. And it, I find it very hard. I, I used to dread mm -hmm. the winter months. And then I, you know, after that, I did also it had to do with a lot with the depression I was going through. But even after I, I wasn't depressed anymore, I still didn't look like winter. Mm -hmm. And actually, I didn't like London or England at all. Because I always wanted, not? I know, it's, I was crazy. But then this friend of mine, uh, I remember she came over, she's travelled all around the world. And she came, and one day she said to me, you know what, I think London is the most beautiful city in the world. And at first I thought she was crazy. But when I started to kind of look at things differently... Mm -hmm. It's like I started to love London. I started to love things about London, about living in England, like all the because there's so much beauty around. You just have to look for it. But I think because you know, as I was growing up, the plan was always to move back home and, and stuff like that. And I kind of got a bit brainwashed, I suppose, <laughs> into thinking that England was really horrible. So I think it's important for you to actually find things in each season that you love. So, for example, I love autumn and winter when, when it's winter time I love putting on my cozy coats and going or going to nice cafes and having even cafes in the park I love to go to this particular cafe in, in the park mm -hmm. when it's raining because it's just so cozy in there so I think it's all in the way you see things if you mm -hmm. find something in every season that you like to do it's you you'll find that you'll start to look forward to each season like as I do I love every single season now yeah. yeah what about you Excel I mean I have to say well I might, I might be um, stoned for this, but I have to say my <laughs> least favourite season is actually summer. Really? Because I don't do heat. I actually prefer it in the cooler months. So spring, yeah. autumn, winter, that's me. But it's not because it makes you feel down, it's just because it, no, no, it's, it's just too hot. Yeah, some I find, people I find that it feel... personally too hot and it's yeah. just like, oh, seriously, I can't cool down. 
So, but you know, but in in the same time as well, in the same regard as well, I suppose with winter everything is dull and grey and leaves are falling off the trees. But even that, there's beauty. But it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. The the leaves are a golden. I, I drove down this road the other day, and it's yeah. like it was gorgeous. All these leaves are on the on the ground. Mm. I, I, unfortunately, I didn't get to take a picture, but it was it was lovely. Mm. And it's just oh, it's lovely. I love it. Yeah, and like you say, it's about finding what is good in each season exactly. that would actually exactly. Yeah. Enjoy so in your the, summer months, in the your spring months, you've got your, your restaurants along the river and everything like that. It's just wonderful. And even if it's raining, you can put your boots on, your waterproof boots, you know, your waterproof coat. You can go splashing around. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Don't see it as depressing or dreary. So I really think it's all in the way you see things. But shall we do this prize draw and find out who's won Excel? Come on. Are you ready, guys? Are we getting a drum roll here? <laughs> so don't forget, this is for the short stay in the Algarve, all-inclusive. So let's see who's won. Okay, stop now. <laughs> oh, sorry, did I just catch your fingers? No, that's Okie dokie. Let's see. Give it a good shake. Give it a good, give it a good, good rummage around. Yeah, good rummage, rummage around. In there, rummage okay, in there. I've picked a name. Who is it? Let's see who it is. And it's Verena Matthews, who's our winner. Oh so my well done, God. Verena. Well done and you. she is from London. So well done, Verena. Someone will be in touch with you very shortly to give you this fabulous prize. Indeed. Well done. Enjoy. So I think we may have time yeah. for a news item before we go. Oh, well. Okay. There might be hope after all for me to <laughs> squeeze this news bit in here. Lovely jubbly. Well, I'll end this on a good, on a good note. A teenager by the name of Amy Corner, who's been suffering from an eating disorder since the age of eight, is now battling herself back to health and um, her, her weight had dropped down to five stone, which was quite um, life-threatening. Mm -hmm. And so now that she's overcome this, she's hoping to inspire others with, um, with how she's overcome this. She's recorded a video to share her story, and I have a picture here with her and her mum. And mm -hmm. um, yes, so we just hope that... She's done brilliantly. Absolutely. So, so we have time for a super quick news item. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thank so. you very much, Excel. <laughs> we are going in just a second. But if you, want, if you want more information about the programme, you can visit the website, chrissybisha.tv, and it has all our guest details on there too. And if you'd like to email me, you can do so on chris at chrissybisha.tv. And just to leave you with this final thought, there is beauty in everything and everyone if you look hard enough. Be happy and stay positive. Bye-bye for now.